Hello everyone. My name is Martin Bennett. I'm the Adult Services Librarian at the Rita and Trotty Library. Welcome to Intro to Podcasting Basics. This is a per program that I've previously done in person, but I know right now we're all doing what we can to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So I wanted to give a provide a video recording. That way you can, you know, sort of start your podcast at your own pace. Um, I know some of the things that we discuss when it comes to podcasting, it can feel complicated. What I want to try to do is introduce podcasting as, you know, as a process that's really more about workflow than about technical know-how. There, there's some technical know-how that will help you create a really great podcast, but what's ultimately important in the creation of a podcast is that um, uh, you have really good audio you do really well at the script process. And what I want, and everyone's gonna have different platforms, different computers, different technology they're gonna use. The best way to learn how to start a podcast is to just start doing it. And I know that seems simple and maybe even a little patronizing, but it is the truth. The more you kind of immerse yourself, the more you'll discover things that you need. As you encounter problems, the more likely you'll be able to find solutions. So this, presentation, we're going to move pretty swiftly. I, you know, I will take time to explain some complicated principles, but what I want to do is kind of introduce the process, introduce the workflow so that you can begin creating your workflow that works for your process. So this is going to be a basic workflow that you can adopt for your needs, whatever you need for your podcast. So we're going to get started by talking about what is podcasting, and then we're going to start with the workflow. The you know first part of that workflow to be in preparation, outlining, writing, and rehearsing. We're going to talk about the recording and the audio editing part of the workflow, and then we're going to talk about uploading and then sharing. We're going to um, uh, try to use um, uh, platforms and try to use tools that are ultimately free, while there are some options that you'll be able to use that may cost money. I do want to make this accessible to everyone. So we're primarily going to be using things that are free. As a little bit of um, uh, housekeeping for this program, I do want to mention all of the materials that I'm going to be sus discussing are will be available to you on um, uh, this website right here. So this is the Read and Writers Group website. What I've done is I've created a separate page called Intro to Podcasting. So I'll have this hyperlinked and in the description of the video. This is readandwritersgroup.weebly.com. I'll have the hyperlink directly to the page for the intro to podcasting. That'll include the presentation that we're gonna use. That'll include the workflow checklist, which is kind of distills what the workflow we're discussing to where as you start your podcast, you can kind of check off what you've completed. And also the audio editing checklist. This is a checklist that you can use when you start getting into the audio editing, when you want to adjust audio to kind of meet what you need to do. So that's a, that's that'll be available along with some supplementary material that I will actually discuss as we kind of move through in the presentation, such as how a radio script looks like, how to use copyright music and media in your podcast. Um, the main things that I want to really emphasize is we're going to talk about script writing down what you need for a podcast we're going to talk about kind of um, uh, mixing audio tracks and audio editing, and then um, um, how to kind of upload and share that so that you can share that to the public. Now, just a moment here. Here we go. So to get started, I just want to define a podcast. So a podcast is just a digital file that users can download or stream. So it's kind of, it's something that can be downloaded on a digital device like a tablet, computer, or smartphone. It's a term that was coined by a British journalist named Ben Hammersley. So a podcast, so let me clarify something about podcasts. So we often use the term podcast to refer to podcast series made up of individual podcast episodes. Kind of like a TV show. There's a TV show and a TV show is made of episodes. A podcast is just kind of like an audio version of that. That, um, uh, that means that, so we're going to discuss how to record podcast episodes for a potential podcast series. So the, 
the first part of starting off, and this is kind of, this might feel too simple, but it really is important, which is what is your goal? Honestly, I think you should ask yourself, why do you want to record a podcast? Because there's thousands of podcasts out there. And when I say thousands, there's now upward of 700,000 podcasts, according to Blueberry. And there's between 2,000 and 3,000 new shows launching each month, according to the New York Times. So what I want to explain is that you should start off by asking yourself, what is your goal for this podcast? Um, um, what in the kind of refine what your goal is, what your strategy might be for this podcast. Think of what information or what stories do you want to share? That's what ultimately we're doing with a podcast is we're sharing information. We're sharing a story that we want to communicate to an audience. So, you know, ask yourself, what story is it being told? What information do you feel the public? What, uh, what information do you feel an audience? An audience can be broad, it can be more specific. What information do you feel an audience um, uh, would benefit from? And then you wanna, you know, the way to kind of refine that is the what I call, I end up calling the Morrison rule. It's based on this Toni Morrison quote. If there's a book that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. So just substitute book and read to pod, with podcast and listen. If there's a podcast that you want to listen to, but it hasn't been recorded yet, then you must write and record it. So think about the podcast that you want, that you cannot find, and then that's a way to kind of um, refine what is your goal? What, what sh information should the public benefit from? And then once you define that goal, figure out what your audience wish to pursue. Ask why me? Like ask yourself, why me? Why are you the one that has to tell this story? Maybe it's because it's your passion. You know, passion meaning like maybe this is what you think about every waking moment. You just want to share this to people because this is your passion. Maybe it's something that you're an expert on. You know, maybe there's a, there's a, you know, there's information out there that you, as an expert, as a credentialed person, you find misleading and you want to do a podcast that clarifies what that information is, what the truth is. Um, you know, is it a story or is it stories that you want to share that you want to give a platform for? Are there stories that you're not seeing enough of that you want to, um, uh, that you feel like you need to give a platform for, or you need to tell these stories? And, and you know, and as I said, I think a lot of us are going to kind of come off with this. We're going to be thinking about this from just sort of a personal vantage point, or maybe we're thinking it from a business vantage point. If you're, you know, if you're say running a business on like, let's say, you're a bakery, you could maybe do the bakery podcast where you kind of talk about the information about how bakeries work or how certain things are made, kind of give, you know, bring in an audience so that they have a greater appreciation of what you do or, you know, things like that. That's what you kind of have to think about when you ask yourself, what is your goal? Who is your audience? And you need to think about your audience because, you know, I agree with this quote from Jordan Harbinger, podcasting to start a real conversation that will benefit your podcast. So ask, what is your goal? What's the conversation you want to share with a specific, with an audience? And what would benefit them? And then, then you can start asking yourself, well, what kind of a podcast do you like? What kind of, you know, so ask yourself, you know, do I want to do maybe a serial style murder mystery podcast? Do I want to do an interview kind of podcast? Do I want to do storytelling? Those are all things you kind of have to think about at this stage. You want to plan that out. Some of it's, sometimes you're going to be kind of thinking about this in your head. Maybe write it down. When you write something down, it becomes a living, breathing thing. So start writing down, jotting down some ideas, what I call like scrap writing or um, uh, scratch writing, just kind of some ideas, things that maybe aren't fully formed yet, things you may not share um, with individuals just yet, but things that you're kind of thinking about in terms of this is my goal, who is my audience? So to get started, so let's say you've come up with your goal. Let's say you've come up with an idea that you really think is going to speak to an audience. You've come up, you re, there's some information that you've come up with that you want to be able to share. That's great. So the next step is you're going to start writing. And I talk about this with podcasting because I think when we think of podcasting, we think of just, okay, I need to learn all these, you know, 
audio um, uh, workstations. I need to learn how to use, you know, Audacity or um, Adobe, um, um, or these Adobe programs. You can record on anything, but what's really important is writing. And you really want to write down your script, even if it's an interview podcast, even if it's a podcast where you're going to be interviewing people, you really want to be able to have a very thorough outline at the very least of what you're going to be discussing, what you're going to be saying. If you're the kind of person that like when you're when you're talking, you like to improvise, then you certainly want to kind of maybe just at the very least have a very structured outline. So when you start off writing, you're going to be writing a podcast script. You're writing to be heard. Writing a podcast means writing to be heard. And that's very and that's very vital to understand that. You know, even casual interview style podcast, you know, you're going to need to be kind of speaking with the frame of mind that you're going to be heard. You know, gesture, visual cues and communication, things like that, they're not going to be communicated through an audio program like this. They're not going to be communicated through a podcast. You have to be able to communicate only using language that you can speak. So that means you're going to use language that's clear and descriptive. That's very, you know, sometimes that can feel, um, a, maybe, how do we put this? That could kind of feel like they're at odds with each other. There's clear, you know, like maybe a news reporter would write. There's descriptive. When we think of descriptive, we tend to think of, say, something that's poetic or flowery. But you can you want to find somewhere in the middle where you're clear. The audience understands what you're saying, but they also can they also can kind of visualize in their mind. They can imagine what you're saying too. You know, if you're describing a scene, they need to be able to imagine what's happening without having to look at it. You know, I. Really, you need to be thinking about um, uh, how we're how you're kind of translating something to maybe someone who would be blind. Like, how do you translate something visual to someone who's blind? That's kind of the framework you have to have with writing a podcast. You're using words that tell the audience everything they need to know, imagine, or experience. You're maximizing sound devices that will help communicate effectively. You know, so that means that you're using like say alliteration, maybe that you're using um, uh, words that sound right. You know, language is an auditory experience. Even when we read, we hear the words in our heads. So you're using language that when it's heard, helps the individual imagine. You also, when you're writing, make sure in the script that you're kind of including breaks for potential clips or music. So, some ideas for sharpening writing skills and podcasting. So how do we kind of, you know, you might be asking yourself, how do I get started with that? So the first thing you could do is read a transcript. Read a transcript or try to write your own transcript. Like listen to your podcast and try to write down everything they say. That was something screenwriter Judd Apatow would do when he was watching Saturday Night Live. He would watch the episodes and just write down the sketch. And that's kind of how we learn how to write comedy. If you're doing a podcast, maybe do that with an audio episode. But that might be a little challenge. So just look at a transcript. Um, listen to NPR or look at newspaper. So a couple of examples I've got on this um, uh, intro to podcasting page is I've got this, what does a radio script look like? So NPR through their training portal actually shares, you know, a screenplay, um, a, a script of, um, a, or how their script is looked and what kind of, what do they do specifically to the script so that the person reading it can emphasize or understand words, understand what's about what's being written. Um, so for instance, right here in the intro, they noticed the capitalized phrase, regular order. So this is the, so this is the script. It's a phrase you normally hear only from pro Congress nerds, but it's been increasingly common in conversations about this about Senate this year. The phrase is regular order. So what they did is they capitalized the phrase regular order to indicate that the person reading the intro should emphasize those words. So that's something that maybe you can do in your um, uh, in your script is capitalize all the words so that the person understands emphasize this. Notice they did that with this why, why it matters. 
if you're having um, uh, someone's name and you're not and you think it might be and it might be uncommon or you might someone might struggle with it you can um, uh, write it out phonetically so people can understand that same thing with other words that might be more complicated they also kind of talk about the body of a piece the actualities um, where they kind where they you know include some of the audio clips that they're going to kind of mix in you don't necessarily have to do that you can just kind of put in like an in you know put in insert audio clip or something like that um so though that's all stuff that i would actually go into in terms of looking at how to write a script here's another idea that you can do look go to a video clip or a sports game or just an, even a picture and try to write write down what you see i'm gonna before i start recording i'm gonna rehearse it so i'm gonna rehearse or host a table read. I'm going to ask some trustworthy friends or colleagues to listen to a live script reading and offer feedback. So I'll have, I'll actually read this script and maybe have some folks tell me how, how are we, is this making sense? Am I communicating clearly? Do you feel like you're in this world? And then I also might time the reading to see how long the reading is. So that's just an example of what you can, what you would do. So, you know, don't feel like you have to write the most perfect thing on the, on the onset, write something down, write to the best of your ability, and then kind of start moving forward. Once you rehearse it, you'll be able to kind of pick up some things. And if you kind of need a little bit of time, that's fine. You know, use the drawer rule where you put a script proverbially away in a drawer and check it in maybe a week, see if it sounds the same. Now, when you start to record and edit, the thing that I think a lot of people, when they want to kind of learn podcasting, is they want to learn how to use what is called a digital audio workstation. This is an application that records, mixes, and edits audio. Um, so this is, um, a, think of this as like a digital version of a sound mixing console, console with the ability to create audio files, like an MP3 file, uh, WAV file, FLAC file. Um, now, there's a few free audio workstations. If you use a MacBook or MacBook Pro, you have GarageBand. A lot of podcasts use GarageBand to record and mix audio. Um, um, there's also Audacity that's available, PC Windows, Mac, even Linux. Um, we're going to use Audacity in just a moment. What I want to also kind of share is that with the digital audio workstation, like I said, it's the digital version of a mixing console. You should think of it, you know, this is something that has the capacity to record tracks from mic. It has an interface that allows you to interact with sound waves of recording, ability to edit and add more tracks like music clips. So if you record the audio, you also want to be able to have a music clip. Tools to edit tracks such as cutting, sound effects like reverb, echo, noise reduction, pitching, and, and, then, also, and then eventually the ability to um, uh, export it as a, a, a file. So we're going to start off with Audacity because that can be recorded to most things. So we're going to, I'm going to open up Audacity here. So this is Audacity. So I've already downloaded it here, but I have, if you go to the intro to podcasting page, I do have an Audacity download. Um, so that if you click that, it'll take you to where you need to go to download it based on what you have. I've also included some video tutorials so that you can kind of, so if you want a little more emphasis on the technical components, there's a lot you can do under the hood here. I'm only going to kind of scratch the surface and kind of talk about the basics, what you might need for, you know, what most people will need for the podcast. So the first thing I want to kind of share is this is a, um, uh, so this is sort of where you start off with. There's a lot of different things you'll be able to do as you kind of move forward and learning this interface here. The main thing that I want to emphasize when we start recording, when we start recording and when we start editing, is that what's ultimately what you're ultimately doing is you're recording tracks. You're rec um, uh, and what you're doing is each you're going to be mixing the tracks and editing the tracks so that they flow well together. So to start off, I'm going to go to Tracks, Add New, Stereo Track. So you get this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, hello, my name is Martin Bennett. 
And then what you'll do is I'm just going to say that I'm going to press this record here. Hello, my name is Martin Bennett. Hello, my name is Martin Bennett. That's so I've recorded a track. You know, some of you may just that's all you need to do. Just go to tracks, add new stereo track, and then just kind of start reading your script or, um, you know, start recording your podcast. Now, one of the things I want to talk about when it comes to recording here is microphones. So what I would do is, if you if you don't have any money, if you're just brand new to this, use whatever microphones available. If mon, uh, you know, if you ha I'm a, you know, you can do a lot with your computer mics. We're kind of in this period now where it's it's probably the easiest right now to do really good audio than it's ever been. And so your computer will have really good audio. Your um, um your smartphone, your tablet will have a pretty good audio, you know, good mic that you can record in. Is it going to sound the best? It's not going to sound as great as a really professional microphone, but it will work. And you can kind of mix it. You can edit it in post, um, as I'll show in just a bit. I'm a because really what matters is you want to just make sure that you're recording in a room that traps sound. So a room that maybe avoids excessive reverb, um, excessive echo, except areas with outside noise. These components um, a, are really what's more important for recording audio. If you have, um, a, you know, even with a mic, if you have those elements, it's going to sound funky. So it, really what matters is just, you know, just record. Like I said, don't give yourself reasons to not do a thing. Just record using the mic that's best for you. You can record directly in Audacity or GarageBand, or you can just open up a file um, like in um, a note or something like that. I know there's a lot of um, other things that you can use to record sound. So just record the sounds there. Record what you're going to say there. If you do decide to get a mic, like let's say you, um, I, you get a, you know, nice little Christmas gift and you decide you really want to invest in this. What you want to think about when you're looking at mic is you want to think about a mic that's less omnidirectional and more cardioid. So when you start like saying go going to Best Buy or Amazon or B and H photo and video or any of these other places that offer um a multimedia technology, look for a thing terms like super cardioid, hypercardioid. You want to look for cardioid as the kind of mic. Basically, what that means is that these cardioid mics, they're going to record a voice that has less sound bleeding. They're directional. At omnidirectional, that's what you use for landscapes. That's what you might use for if you want to capture sounds in a larger area. A cardioid mic is really only capturing a mic that is in a specific area. The more cardio it is, such as super cardio or high cardio, the more directional it is. So there's going to be a little mic technique that you'll need for that. You may have to have the mic right in front of your face, almost. Um, but you know, as it has right here on this image, um, uh, you really want, um, uh, you know, when you get a cardio mic, it's only going to kind of capture sound within a specific area. So that that's where it kind of gets the price point is that. You know, whereas a laptop mic may record a lot of stuff, it's you know, a lot of things going on in a room or in a space. A cardio mic is only going to record, you know, things that are being said directly into it. Um, things you also want to look out for, I would recommend using a USB mic. So look for things that are cardioid. Look for, say, a USB mic. Something that can plug into a computer or tablet. Um, a USB mic is something that you'll be able to plug in, open up your audio workstation and it'll be able to record directly into that audio workstation so that just makes your workflow a lot easier and then i would also think of condenser mics if that's possible a condenser mic that's what's used to record in studio a dynamic mic is used to um, uh, for live performances so a dynamic mic that's something that you'll find more in like a live concert or a live venue um because um uh, it's sturdier 
the condenser mic is a little more vulnerable, but um, uh, it's gonna get um, uh, provide you with better sound quality. So let's go ahead and just start here. So let me write a new script. So I'm gonna go right here. So what I'm gonna do, see this X right there? That's gonna close that audio track there. So the first thing you wanna do is when you open up a new file is you wanna kind of save the project. So I'm gonna save this project here as an Audacity project. So it's not gonna be saved as an audio file. So just, just to clarify that, it's not saved as an audio file. So I'm gonna save this as read in Friday podcast. Okay. Okay, so right, it's just telling me that it's empty right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, gonna add a new stereo track here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read from that script and start recording. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go right here to there, and then I'm gonna do this right here. Hello, and welcome to the Read and Trotty Library podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. I'm your host, Martin Bennett. Today we will talk about poetry and how poetry moves us. Now is I'm going to um, play this back. Hello, and welcome to the Read and Trotty Library podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. I'm your host, Martin Bennett. Today we will talk about poetry and how poetry moves us. Okay, so first of all, let me just say, this was recorded using without a mic. See where it says built-in microphone? That's referring to the computer mic. So built-in microphone, built-in output. So what you're hearing is my mic, me recording this podcast without a mic. So that's I did that specifically because I know some of you are probably not going to be ready to use a mic. So just, uh, you, can, you don't have to use a mic. So I've started here. Now, let me kind of start doing some other things. So when we want to edit, there's some basic tips that I want to share. So first of all, we want to back up all the recorded audio files before adding effects or editing. So maybe recommendation might be to expect the audio file and back it up on an external or cloud drive. Okay. So what that means is, let's say I want to, I'm going to save project. So I always want to save project. Um, and you can usually do that through Control S or Command S. So Control S if you're on a, Mac, on a Windows computer, Command S if you're on a MacBook. I'm on a MacBook. Okay, what I might do is I might go ahead and export this file as an MP3. So I'm just gonna do intro. The reason I wanna do that is if something happens to where this crashes or, you know, gosh forbid, I, you know, I just, it's always best to back up everything. So right there, I've just backed up my audio file. Let me walk you back that, through that again. So I did export, export as MP3. That way I have the audio file I recorded. Some of us are gonna be recording this not, uh, on an audio sort of, on a different audio application than our digital audio workstation where we're mixing the audio. I would always do this so that you have at least an MP3 copy of the, um, uh, of the file that you record on a digital audio workstation. Now, what I'm gonna start doing is a few things. So the first thing I wanna do is kind of play around here, you know, on a, you know, digital auto restricting, it's gonna sit on a track for editing on the track an editor can trim or cut. So let's say I wanna get rid of this, this intro here. Okay, so I've got these little things that I can do. I've got selection tool, I've got draw tool, I've got multi-tool, time shift tool, all these tools. So let's say I just wanna highlight one section here. So what I let me show you what I did again. Click this tool. Click on the gray here. Click maybe maybe just a little bit more here. There we go. And it should give you this hand here, kind of pointing where do you where do you want this line to go? So I'm going to go right here and kind of drag it over here. And then what I'm going to do is I can go to delete. And that deletes that portion of the 
um, a podcast. So rather than have a lot of that empty space, I now kind of go directly into the podcast. I'm going to click save right here so that I have that. So that's the first thing you kind of want to do is you want to start trimming and cutting a lot. You know, you, um, you'll be able to also do that inside where the audio is. So let's say, you know, use your sound waves as a kind of guide of where things are recorded. But let's say you, you want to get rid of this portion right here because it's not sounding right. Let's say you had a glitch or you, you know, this is a part of the audio that doesn't sound right. So you want to cut it. So you can do that, come back up here to delete and it'll be gone. Um, I'm going to redo that, undo delete so that, cause that's so that I have that there, but that's just an example of what you can do. Okay. Now here. So the first thing you always want to do is you want to focus on the main track of the recorded podcast. So if you do an interview, focus on the interview tracks, track or tracks first, you want to focus on your narration track first. Do that because that's, that's your kind of main track. That's your lead track. So you want that to be the best first before you start adding sound effects, before you start adding music. Don't worry about that yet. Right now, let's just worry about this main track here. So I'm going to be trying to get some things done using this audio editing checklist. So the first thing we want to do is we want to clean the audio track. So using the cutter tool, going around cutting audio, we want to remove all the parts of the audio that we don't want. We, we did that with the intro. Now what I'm going to do, let's say we want to, now we can do a noise reduction. We want to do a noise reduction because we want to get rid of any kind of residual sort of noise. So if there's like maybe background noise in, um, uh, in, your, in the recording, find, find the sound wave that kind of has that sound. So I'm going to go right here. See the sound? It's an itty bitty sound wave. And if you need to zoom, you can zoom in right here. So these are your zoom tools. Use that. The reason you want to do that is you want to go to effect up here. So this is where you're going to have a lot of your audio effects. This is where it'll get more fun. But right now, we're just going to focus on noise reduction. So I'm going to do noise reduction right here. So what I needed to do is step one, get a noise profile. So I, you highlight that little bit, get a noise profile. What it's going to do is it's going to get a profile of the specific noise that you've had. Now what you're going to do is Click outside right here, outside of the track. That's going to unhighlight it. If you click right here, that's going to highlight the whole track. So I'm going to click right there, to unhighlight it. Click right here to select everything. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to noise reduction. So I've got the noise profile. And you can adjust the noise reduction sensitivity depending on however you want it to be. But right now we're just going to kind of keep it like, it, you know, keep what they suggest to us. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to redu reduce the noise on the audio track. It's going to reduce. OK, so you can decide after you listen to it, does it sound cleaner? Does it sound better? It may not sound the best, but does it sound clean? Is there a lot of noise? That's what you're wanting with clean audio is, is there a lot of background noise? Or can everyone hear the voice clearly? It may not be the best sounding voice, but can everyone hear the voice clearly? So you start off with that. then. Looking at this audio editing checklist here, you want to adjust the level. You don't want it to be at zero or above zero decibels. Um, the reason you don't want to do that is it starts to distort. It kind of doesn't sound it doesn't sound great to the people that are listening to it. So we want to make it as friendly to someone's ears as possible. So see right here, this is where we can sort of adjust the levels here. So see the gain. It's right now it's at zero decibels. So that's you know we. Now, just to kind of show you, if we increase the gain, hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast, a podcast See, it starts about to, our it library starts to and have a librarian. little bit of distortion. It's less friendly to listen to on the uh, from your ears, and see how it, and see how it's getting red right here. So that tells us that's a no no. What we want to do, I would say between negative five to negative fifteen. I would just play with it. Play with it and kind of like, you know, maybe try negative five. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast, 
a podcast. Well, maybe you want to go maybe negative 11. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast. It's not going to be loud, necessarily. What's important is you just want to not distort. You want it to have headroom. That's a term you'll see a lot of people that are audiophiles or people that are in the um, that, are, that work at audio use is headroom. You want people to be able to hear the track and they can adjust the volume, increase the volume on their output device, like their speakers or their um, uh, or the laptop, so that um, uh, to get um, uh, to get it as loud as they want to. Um, if you have it to where there's less um, to where it's already loud, it's going to make it really difficult to get it to sound um, uh, really good. So I'm just going to keep it here at negative six. Now the next step that I want to um, uh, that I want to emphasize is you want to adjust the frequency of sound waves. I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit so it's a little easier to see. So adjust sound frequency of sound waves to desired tone using equalizer tool. So this is where you're going to use bass treble mid range. So bass just refers to the low frequency sound waves, the low 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 voice. That's your that's the bass. Treble, the high frequency, that's what, so what you're kind of doing with an equalizer tool is you're adjusting it to where, you know, it, if there's someone that has, you know, that has a lower voice, like most male voices, you want to maybe reduce the bass, maybe increase the treble so that it sounds more natural. That's what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to get it as sounding as natural as possible. And it's vice versa for female voices. I used to work with, um, someone who did live audio, they would um, um they would just turn the treble off for female voices because women tend to have a higher voice than men. Um, the equalization is going to vary for individual track. So play with it until it sounds natural. So I'm going to click right here, highlight the audio. So when it gets that light blue, that's when you know you've got it highlighted completely. I'm going to go to effect. I'm going to go to bass and treble. So see, you get this bass and treble. So since I have a, since I since I'm a guy, I'm gonna decrease the bass and see how it sounds. So let me just close, kind of show the before. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to bass and treble here. I'm gonna decrease the bass maybe just a little bit here. Apply, and notice the sound waves changed. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast. You can get, decide to do um, uh, if you feel like that's the right one. I'm going to maybe just increase the trouble just a little bit here. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast. That sounds okay. I'm just going to leave live with that. So now that we've adjusted bass and trouble in the um, uh, audio file, on the audio track, we don't, we can add a compressor. I, I think at this stage, we don't necessarily need to do that. We just, we can forget about that for now. Then you want to start making little creative adjustments. So we've done these basic adjustments, kind of making sure the audio sounds good. Now we want to maybe add effects. This is, this is where it can get kind of playful, just like you would with bass and treble. You just can, you know, like, let's say you want to add reverb. You can add a reverb effect and. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library podcast. And then it sounds like you're in a larger room. Or let's say you want to add the wah effect, the wah effect, which basically kind of alternates between low frequency, high frequency. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library. So those are things that you can do using Audacity. I think if you're recording a podcast, you won't need to do that unless you have to create a sound effect. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that with your main track. And then you want to start mixing audio tracks. So let's say you want to have the have a like a music recording first, and then you want to have the dialogue come afterwards. So that's where we're going to start adding tracks. So we we focused on this main track here, this main audio track of your recording of your podcast. Now let's say we want to add music. It gets a little complicated because unless you're you're the creator of the music, 
you may have to and I get the rights for the music like if you want to have um a Rolling Stone song or if you want to have you know a Beatles song obviously you'll have to get rights for that here so on the intro to podcasting page I have this thing on using copyright and music and media if you feel like you need to I'm a use copyrighted music and media. Um, use this resource um, uh, to kind of learn how to do that. We're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is I just want to share a couple of things here. Um, so you can go to this New York Tech Library for different pl um, uh, places to find um, uh, public domain and free audio. So these are multiple resources that you can use to find free audio here. So use that at, at to your discretion. Um, if you want to find sound effects, freesound.org is where you really want to go for um, uh, for sound effects. Um, so let's say you want to find, say, beach noise. You could search beach, and you know if you want a beach sound or some or you know any kind of sound effect, you know look through this, find a sound effect that works for you, download it, and you can use it. So so you can also just you know, searching through Google, look up free sound effects or like, you know, search of a specific sound effect that you want. Like if you're wanting beach sounds, you can search free beach sounds. You could go to YouTube, try to find it there. Um, I just find that free sound, everything that's on there is guaranteed to be free to use. Whereas on YouTube, sometimes it'll be free to use. Sometimes it won't be. Look in the description to verify that it's free to use. When it comes to music, music, you want to come to when you want to use music, go to Pixabay and you click on music right here. This music should be free to use, but every now and then they may have a little contingency in terms of, you know, making sure that you cite them as the source. If, you know, credit, you know, make sure you provide credit. So just check on that. Um, but, you know, you can search, you know, what are some of the top tracks? You can also search here if there's something in specific you're looking for based on mood, based on genre. So let's say I wanna add a classical piano kind of piece to my, to my, to my little library podcast here. Okay, so and as I said, once you preview, find the track, you can download. And then you see here, right here, crediting isn't required, but linking back is greatly appreciated. Use the following text. So that's something that you could use at the end of your podcast. Just say music from Pixabay. Um, but, you know, click download, get the um, uh, MP3 file on your computer. Okay. And then this is our Rita and Charlie podcast. So we've got this main track already edited here. I'm just going to click outside that box so that none of that's highlighted. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to file import. So you export it when you're when you're finished, you import when you need to add an audio file. So I'm going to import audio and then I'm going to find where I downloaded that. So it looks like I downloaded that right here. So I'm going to add that here and so it's gonna when you import it it'll auto automatically add as a new track now if this if the music if the audio track is longer than the main track then you're going to get something that looks like this where it you know, my, you know this is a six minute track we were just recording something that was less than 30 seconds um easy solution to that is just to kind of you know get it back to here using the zoom tool get it to where you know it just looks a little better for you so i see this little negative space here so just like we did before i'm gonna i'm um you know i want to get rid of that negative space so i'm just going to click outside of here use make sure i have the selection tool click right here and i'm going to go to edit delete get rid of that now when I talk about mixing, mixing is all about combining audio tracks so that they work with each other so that one's not overwhelming with each other. To give you an example, this is one that has not been mixed. I've just cut the music track, but this is one where, you know, haven't been mixed yet. 
Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Marty Library Podcast. And see, the music is overwhelming. The music is overwhelming the main podcast track, the main um, uh, recording. Let me play it again. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Marty Library Podcast. Part of that is because I've got this at five, negative five decibels, and I've got this at and still zero, so it's already louder. So it's already louder. So what I might do then is I might think, okay, I need to get this lower than five. You typically want to have that main track to be louder than any other track you have, sound effects, music otherwise. So I'm going to go right here, go to negative, maybe let's say negative eight. Let's see how this, and like I said, the difficult part of this process is you're kind of using your ear to help you. You're not, you know, in terms of mixing, what you're using is you're using your experience in what you hear to kind of understand what you want. Hello, and welcome to the Read and Party Library podcast, a podcast about our library. And, our and see, that's that's a little better. Bring it all the way down. Just go to extreme, like maybe negative nineteen. Hello, and welcome to the Read and Party Library podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. And then maybe I'll bring this down here. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library Podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. I'm your host, Mark Bennett. So that sounds a little better. It's not perfect, but it sounds it sounds a little better. Maybe if I decrease the volume just a hair. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library Podcast, a podcast. So that sounds a little better. You can hear enough of the music to where you know it's there, It's but it's ambient music. It's not the main thing. So what I'm going to, but now part of mixing is also going to be kind of where is the music placed versus, say, the um, uh, the rest of the um, uh, main track and everything. What, the, what I mean by that is let's say I want the music to introduce the track. Let's say I want the track, the music track to begin, and then we go into the um, uh, main recording. There's a way we can do, we can move the recordings around. So we can use this time shift tool. And what I can do is put this time shift tool on the audio track and kind of just maybe scoot it away just a little bit. Now let's, let's see how that sounds. Hello. And welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library Podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. So that sounds a little better. Now if I move it a little more. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty okay. Library Podcast. Now that, I think that sounds okay. Let me just play that one more time. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library Podcast. So I'm going to save. Always make sure that you're saving your file on that. So. I'm just going to leave it at that. Is it, is it the perfect thing right now? No, but I, like I said, right now I'm just wanting to illustrate what you can do. Now, what I'm going to do right quick here is instead of the rest of this music track here. So I'm going to use that selection tool, do that, go to delete, get rid of that. So now I have this very clean um, uh, audio track here. And I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library Podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. I'm your host, Mark Bennett. Today we will talk about poetry and how poetry moves. So, save. Once you've you use import to bring an audio file in, but once you're finished, like let's say you've completed the project, you've added the music that you want, let's say you've added sound effects that you want, now we want to kind of, now we want to export this. Export means we're going to change this into an mp3 file. So we're going to export this as mp3. You can also export it as a wave. That's a, it'll take a little more room on your computer, but it'll be less compressed. I'm just going to export as an MP3. I'm going to give it, make sure the name is right. So, Rita Trotty Podcast episode one. I'm just going to do EP one. What quality do I want? 
I want to get, you know, very good quality. And then I'm just going to do save. So they're going to be mixed down. This is where you can add things like artist name and so forth, but we're just going to leave it like it is. Okay. And then I can leave that. So that's, we've recorded and edited an you know, a little brief snippet of the podcast. It's not the most perfect podcast episode. You know, there's things we can do to tweak it a little more, but we're going to, like I said, right now, we're just about getting things done. So what's important is when you're starting out, just making sure everything's clear. People can hear what I'm saying clearly. The music adds just a little touch um, uh, of ambiance to the track. So we're going to leave it as it is right now. Right now, we're going to move forward to hosting and sharing. So the resource I'm going to recommend on this is going to be SoundCloud. There's many hosting sites for podcasts. We're focusing on SoundCloud because it's a free site. Um, other platforms such as Spotify and iTunes cost more money and have more requirements. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through uploading to SoundCloud. Once the podcast file is uploaded to SoundCloud, you can generate a link and have it downloaded for offline use. So that's what I like about SoundCloud. It allows free uploads and downloads. There is a pro option with more features and that you can maybe move forward to as you kind of move forward in your podcasting. But an app, but it's also an app available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. So, you know, that's something that people have access to um, uh, if they have the SoundCloud app. Now, once you when you go to SoundCloud, it's gonna ask you to register. So just register. Anybody can register. So just to kind of give an idea about what that looks like here, I'm going to sign out. So when you do there, just go to create account. And one of the great things is you can just create an account using your Facebook, Google, Apple. You can also just use like a profile URL. So if you're wanting to um, create a podcast for something that's more professional, you can obviously use this to do that. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to do sign in. Go ahead and sign in here. And it's a fairly straightforward process. So we've created our MP3 file for the podcast. We've created our MP3 file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to upload here. And so you can do a lot with your profile. So what I would, you know, this is what I would, you know, there are things you would need to do if you're wanting to do this on a more professional level, have a, have a header image. Um, you know, mine has my name, but you would probably have your like podcast name as the name. What we're going to do though, all I want to show you is let's go to upload. So I'm going to choose files to upload. It's going to be in my documents here looking for Rita and Trotty podcast episode one. So I'm going to click that. And then, then this is where I start to kind of do a little more so I can do um, uh, episode one. Poetry. I can also change the URL so I can make it a little easier. So if I wanted to make it maybe just um, so that people can have it, remember it a little better, I can do that. If you do the pro version, you can make the um, uh, the URL a little easier, but you know, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. Genre, so just choose what kind of genre is it? Is it a podcast? So there should be, you know, this is more for music. Describe the track. So this is where you would maybe describe and say like, additional track, additional genre, additional mood, you know, things that tags that you will help people kind of find it. And then maybe upload an image here. So I'm just gonna find just a sunset picture here. So people have that. And then there's and then decide privacy if you want to maybe so if you've recorded the podcast and maybe you just want to have someone listen to it just to give you feedback you can make it private um, you can also um, uh, but we're going to make it public so anybody can have access to the track when it comes to metadata you would just need to kind this is where you would put say contains music you know so this is where you would go if you need to credit a musician or something like that um, permissions you know this is what gives individuals opportunity so let's say you want someone to not be able to embed the podcast. So you would just do that. 
so no one has the embed code. It's the same thing for, say, offline listening. So turn that off. So people have to have an internet connection. This people can download and listen to on their on, a, on their SoundCloud app or on their device. Um, enable direct download so people can direct it and I can download here. So all that stuff is just stuff that helps you kind of figure out how gives you control of your podcast episode. But then once you do save, that's it. And then you can go to your and see where it says upload complete, go to your track. So here's our track. Hello, and welcome to the Rita and Trotty Library Podcast, a podcast about our library and our librarians. I'm your host, Mark Bennett. So that's the track. So right there, you can um, move forward with everything. And, you know, you've got the podcast. And see right here where the genre is, has the podcast. I can go right here to share. So if I want to go on my Facebook or if I want to go on my social media pages, I can get this little link right here and share it to anybody, or I can just go to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, etc. Just get the link, share it with everybody so they can start listening to my podcast. So that's that's the essence of, of, of a podcast. I know that's a lot of information that we've talked about, you know, over an hour's worth of information. So the so let me wrap up here by talking about how to kind of use this video and share some final tips. So as far as how to use this video, as I've mentioned at the beginning, the best way to learn is to start. The best way to learn is just to kind of download Audacity or another digital audio workstation. Just write down the write down your podcast episode. It doesn't have to be big. It can, you know, I've seen podcasts that are maybe five minutes, 10 minutes. Record your podcast. And, and upload it and start and just start working with it. You know, do this because you want to. Don't expect profit or anything like that. Do this because you're interested in doing this. And I know it's going to seem intimidating to begin, but remember, everyone starts as a beginner. Anything new gets better with time and practice. So the best thing to do is just practice. Just download a digital audio workstation like Audacity. If you have a Mac, you can use GarageBand if that's available to you. It be available on your iPhone record and just make sure the audio is clean half the time that you know half the battle for a good podcast episode is really clean audio so just make sure it sounds good people can hear it once you do that just you know that's when you can kind of start adding new things to it so just start with the basics the way to use this video excuse me the way to use this video kind of just go back to it go back to this video Look up other YouTube videos, such as those Audacity videos that I've got on the intro to podcasting page. Look at the checklist, the workflow, and that's and I look. Use these as reference. This is sort of an orientation. We go over a lot of information, so you know there might be a thing where wait, how do I am I, how do I record or how do I add this am I effect to the track? This is when you can kind of go to the video, find the place in the video, and kind of refresh yourself on that. Like I said, stick with the fundamentals. Those aren't going to cost a lot of money. So use what's free, use what's inexpensive to make something, you know, when start spending and expanding when you feel ready to. And that usually comes when you have a larger audience. So if you've got, you know, maybe 100 people that listen to your podcast on a weekly or on a monthly basis, maybe that's, you know, do that. Or do that if you get like, you know, get a little bit of money and you just want to. But if you don't have a lot of money, don't think you can't do this. So that's it for intro to podcasting basics. A lot of information. Feel free to go back and forth on this video as you need to as you begin your podcast. Feel free to look up other videos on YouTube on podcasting. A lot of people are out there podcasting. A lot of people will be able to give you information. If you have any questions for me, you can send me an email, bennettm at thecablibrary.org. I'll be able to, I'll do my best to answer any questions, particularly using these um, uh, sort of basic platforms. Um, but I look, you know, get started on your podcast.